Well, hello everybody and welcome to Mikey Taylor Gaming, where today we're going to be taking a look into the world of Sly Cooper glitches for the PS2. There's an absolute gold mine of stuff to see in this episode, and it wouldn't have been possible without the help of the Sly Cooper speedrunning community, so thanks very much to you guys, you have been a huge help with this one. I know everybody's been waiting an entire year for a new episode of Glitch Picnic, so I'm not going to keep you waiting any longer. Let's get on with this, and I hope you all enjoy. Made myself a studio too, it's, it's pretty cool. Hopefully get some more episodes out. Maybe. We'll see. To start us off today, let's see just how broken this game really is by glitching it before it even starts properly. On the title screen. Usually, if you sit all the way through the intro cutscene, you'll see Sly standing on top of the police headquarters roof with the camera panning around him very slowly. It's not very interesting to look at, I know, but you can make this camera pan a tiny little bit more exciting by watching the entire intro again, and this time pressing start a couple of frames before the end of it, just as Sly jumps off screen. If you get the timing right, then when the screen fades back in, you'll be in control of Sly whilst the camera is slowly panning around. And yeah, this makes it kinda hard to see exactly where you are, but you can collect coins, break things, and even use the Binoculum whilst this glitch is active. Not that you really get much control over it, but it's still something you can do. Once you're done playing around in this glitchy state, head over to the water tower where you can skip the first Binoculum cutscene, which is great news because as a first time player of Sly Cooper, I can tell you that these scenes seem to take forever to sit through. And that is no joke. Each one seems to take like five minutes and that is not necessary. So basically what I'm saying is that the only use for this glitch is to save a whole 20 seconds at the start of the game and it really isn't too impressive at all. But there's another glitch in this area that'll let you skip the entire police headquarters without ever going inside. And it's a lot easier to do too. If you've ever tried to escape from the roof in an unintended way before, then you'll know that there are death planes pretty much everywhere up here. No matter where you try to jump off, you'll be respawned back on the roof with a life taken away. But you'll be glad to know that there's at least one place up here that has a janky death plane, making it really easy to escape. If you head over to the back side of the roof where the large fan is spinning on the ground, you'll see a seemingly random antenna poking up out of the floor. This just so happens to be the level designer's fatal flaw, because you can use it to just about get onto the corner of this wall. Isn't that impressive? I knew you'd be impressed by this. Okay, well, obviously this isn't the glitch, but from here you can double jump around the side of the vent and with a little luck, the death plane won't trigger, allowing you to fall all the way down to the parking lot section at the end of the level. By doing this, you'll skip the laser section, finding Carmelita's room, entering the safe code, watching the next long-winded, unskippable cutscene with Carmelita, which feels like it takes 15 minutes, and dodging projectiles in the parking lot, which wouldn't hit you even if you were stood still, honestly. Would you believe that we're still only on the first level of the game and there's even more to see here? The next glitch is the final one to find in this level, but it's my personal favourite, so it's obviously worth seeing. And if speedrunning glitches weren't doing it for you, then a huge out of bounds is probably more your thing, right? Getting out of bounds pretty much uses the exact same method as we've just seen to skip most of the level, only this time you'll need to stand on top of the vent at the back side of the roof instead of the little section of wall on the front side. From the top of this vent you can jump down onto a little ledge similar to before, but this time you'll have to jump towards the camera, swing the hook and hold up on the analog stick to get as close to the building as possible. Get everything right and hey presto, you'll fall all the way to the ground avoiding every single death plane along the way. And whilst you're in this out of bounds area, nothing, and I mean absolutely nothing, has any collision detection whatsoever, so you'll have free reign to run around wherever you like. You could take a stroll through the buildings, and yes, that wasn't a mistake, I meant through the buildings, as you can see here. Or you could take in the romantic sights of the Eiffel Tower for a while. Even better for you, if you're lonely and you don't want to be reminded of romance, then you can take in the views of the buildings that seem to be floating and or sinking. I don't know who designed these, but they're kind of impressive, I'm not going to lie. It's physics-defying architecture, which is also known as the future. In the end, if all of that still doesn't itch the glitch scratch for you, then you can jump off the edge of the world into the abyss, where you'll fall forever, and ever, and ever. Until you reach about two minutes where the screen goes blank and you really are in the void. 
There's nothing else to do down here except for save and quit, so it's probably best to avoid falling down here. Anyway, back to normal play, and with all of the first level glitches finally out of the way, we can jump into the Cooper van and make our way to the second level, a stealthy approach, where we'll find some more interesting, but not entirely helpful glitches. In this level, you can trigger something known as a proxy jump as soon as you get out of the Cooper van, and it's pretty interesting to see, but if you've never even heard of a proxy jump before, then let me explain quickly. In most games, proxy jumps happen when you try to fit an object or a character into a place that's way too small for them. If you do manage to find a space like this and there's a way to cram yourself into it, then the game will usually react with a quick push which tries to get you or the object out of the space as quickly as possible. The push that you get given often ignores speed which means that you can get thrown out of the small space very, very quickly. A few examples of this glitch are in the Spyro the Dragon games for the PS1 where this space at the fireworks factory level will throw or proxy you out. Then the Space Station Silicon Valley for the N64, where if you try to occupy the same space with two animals in jungle doldrums, one of them will fire up into the sky. And probably the most commonly known proxy jump is the swing set glitch in GTA 4, because that's a great one to mess around with, and you can get some really insane results using it. In this level of Sly though, you can use the space behind the sign to get fired up into the air and out of bounds onto the rocks above. Yeehaw! That's gotta be the best proxy jump of all time. Forget the rest, seriously. The swing set glitch has got nothing on this one. The tech for this is effortless. Just face the camera towards you whilst you're behind the sign, walk into the gap that's behind it, and the glitch should work about 90% of the time. Results will vary from small jumps all the way up to huge ones, but very rarely you'll end up breaking the physics and clipping through the floor to lose a life. If you're even luckier, you'll even get to see my favourite glitch from this area. This one, which took way too long to trigger because when it actually happens, it seems to be totally random. Really, I couldn't get this to happen more than once, so just try it for yourselves. I'm, I'm not lying. This is hard. If you do decide to take the easy proxy jump up and over the wall, then you can trigger a second proxy jump right after it using this sign. Get it? S I N. Yeah, I know. I know, I'm still not funny after all these years, but I'm I'm trying. The only problem with this proxy is that it's way harder and it relies a lot more on luck as you've got to line up with the sign in a very specific spot, double jump at a very specific height, and hope that the sign turns the right way to squish you between itself and the wall. If the stars align, then you'll get launched at high speed all the way out of bounds most of the way through the level. If not, then you'll get put through the fence and die in the water, launch way up in the air and die on the fire, or launch way out of bounds and die in the nothing. To summarise, I really don't think it's worth it because it could take some people, including me, way longer than it would take to finish the level the normal way. It probably took around 30 minutes to get one success out of this one, so I hope you all appreciate the pain I've been through here. Even with save states, this was ridiculous. It would have been way better if it launched us into the next glitch instead, but I guess it doesn't matter since this next one can be triggered using any climbable pipe in the game, and they're pretty much everywhere. All this one does is change Sly's position when he's on a grindable object and make it look not quite right. As you can see, that's really the only way to describe this. To activate the glitch, you just need to have Sly latch onto a climbable pole using the circle button and then jump off right away, putting him in a glitchy state known as displacement. While the glitch is active, grinding on any horizontal pipe or rail will give Sly a slight position offset, and triggering the glitch on the same pole at different heights and angles will cause the glitch to act slightly differently each time. And yes, on its own this doesn't seem like much, I know, but there's one place that you'll definitely want to see it being used, and that's in the World 3 hub, also known as the Swamp's Dark Centre. If you trigger the displacement glitch on this set of bones and take a short trip over to this branch, then you'll witness, in the words of Sly Sonic in the Sly Cooper speedrunning discord, whatever this is. No one seems to have an explanation for this craziness whatsoever, and I'm not sure that I want to know because I'm sure it'll cause me brain ache. But what I do know is that this has got to be the most random glitch in the game, and it only gets worse when you have the fast ability unlocked. Look at him go! Reminds me of another character that I'm sure we're all familiar with. As soon as you're finished being entertained by this nonsense, you'll be able to find a couple of other interesting glitches in this world's hub, and for the first one, we'll stick with the displacement glitch again since now we know how to do it. 
trigger the glitch using the same set of bones again, but this time, instead of going towards the branches for total insanity, head over to the grindable vine on the wall to the right. If you use this drum to bounce up onto the vine as close to the wall as possible, then the offset caused by displacement can pop Sly right into the wall and glitch him out. While you're in this position, you can play around with the analog stick and use a well-timed jump to end up out of bounds, though it's not very exciting because there's only a small amount of solid objects out here, which limits how far you can explore. It does show how easy it can be to get out of bounds, though, just by using what seemed at first to be a totally useless glitch. See, we joke about it, but this is why we love the pointless ones. They seem so useless at first, but they've always got a destructive side if you poke them for long enough. I'm absolutely certain that there are way more places in the game that you can use this to your advantage, but if you want another video in less than a year, I'm going to have to leave it up to you guys to play around with this one. While we're on the subject of branches, there's yet another that has an issue that can give you some strange results in the World 3 hub. Whoever coded these branches should definitely have been given a pay rise back in the day for the amount of fun that you can get out of them. This branch has a bit of a spring to it, as you can see, and by exploiting this springiness, we can see even more odd flying around in this hub area. Jump on the branch so it dips down as low as it'll go, then do a small hop before it starts to rise back up, and Sly should pass straight through the branch and into the water below. As long as you've got the water safety technique unlocked so that you don't die when touching the water, the game will try to put Sly back up on the branch, but because it moves up slightly after jumping on it, everything gets a little bit confused on where to put him back, so throws him off in random directions instead. Since the game thinks that Sly's position is locked onto the branch, it'll keep trying to throw you back there after landing in the water, which means you can often end up in a loop where the game doesn't quite know how to get him back up there. That can all be avoided though if you get thrown at high speed out of the hub world altogether. If that happens, then you'll miss the water and avoid the looping, but you'll also be falling into the abyss forever again. So I guess this is a pick your poison kind of glitch. I don't know what it is about this game, but there's a lot of ways to get thrown out of bounds and fall forever. Don't you think? Similar to this branch glitch, and you're not going to believe this, there's yet another physics glitch that you can trigger to launch you way up into the air using ropes too, but no one really knows how or why this one happens. It actually seems to be totally random according to everybody that I've talked to about it, which can make it kind of tricky to pull off. In the World 1 or World 3 hub areas, find a rope and play around with it. That is literally the only explanation I have for this glitch. Jump on, jump off, latch on, Move the analog stick around and occasionally the rope will randomly start to swing and with a little persuasion, launch you all the way up into the air. I managed to get some really big hype from this one sometimes, but I still couldn't tell you exactly what I did to get this to happen. In World 1's hub, messing around with these two ropes can cause some pretty strange things to happen too. Like, I have no idea what that one was doing here, but it doesn't look right, I know that much. You can get some high launches by playing around with ropes in both of these worlds, so this is definitely worth a try. Plus, despite no one really knowing how to trigger this in real time, the tool assisted speedrun of Sly makes some great use of it, so you should probably check that out if you want to see it done effortlessly and usefully. Next though, let's take a look at a glitch that we don't need task knowledge to be able to trigger for ourselves, shall we? You've probably never noticed the minor detail that when Sly jumps, he creates a small dust cloud below him. I mean, why would you? To us, it's totally insignificant, but to the game, the dust actually acts like a marker to tell it where Sly's last known position on solid ground was. So what would happen if you could stop the game from knowing where he was last stood? Well, it's called super jumping, and it's triggered with the simple technique of jumping and swinging Sly's cane, and that's it. If you jump and swing the cane over and over with the right timing, then the dust never appears under Sly, which means the game is only keeping track of where the last dust cloud was created, which could be miles away depending on where you started to chain the jumps. Okay, on its own this doesn't seem like a big deal, but when combined with the game having to rescue you when you have the pit or water safety abilities unlocked, you can end up with some crazy big super jumps. Wherever Sly was standing when you first started the glitchy super jump chain is where the game will try to place him back on the ground after voiding out. The further that you can go with these dustless jumps, the bigger the super jump will be. This is just a short one in a rocky start to show as an example, but it's easy to see just how broken this glitch could be. In fact, after a couple of minutes practice with it, I guarantee that you'll be able to super jump chain your way across long stretches to witness some ridiculously long high and stupid jumps. 
but if you really need a good reason to use this one, then you can even use a super jump to skip past the whole of World 1 without ever unlocking either of the safety abilities or collecting any of the keys to unlock the cannon too. And it's so easy that I managed to do it on my second try. The cutscene trigger really screwed over my first attempt, but you guys know I could have done it the first time, obviously. To do this, you need to stand behind the cannon around this pointy geometry of the base that it sits on, start glitchy jumping down the stairs to the right to avoid the cutscene, and carry on the jump all the way down to the floating barrels through the archway. Aim to get Sly trapped as far back on the second barrel as you can, and if you set everything up right, then the game will try to put him back where he thinks he was before he fell. The resulting speed of the super jump will force him through the cannon collision and into the loading zone that triggers the next area. This totally skips the need to complete any of the levels in this hub world and all of the efforts that the developers put into creating them. Nice. I'm saying all the effort the devs put in like they tried really hard to create this game, but sometimes it looks like some of the things they've created weren't tested at all, like this ladder in 2 to Tango. There's a small glitch you can trigger whilst Carmelita is chasing you where you jump off this ladder and latch back onto it again before it has time to break. If you do this, then Sly will slowly slide off the ledge and fall below the level, and there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. If you've managed to unlock the pit safety ability by this point, then the game gets a little confused on where he should be put back after falling into the void, which can end in some odd results too, like forever falling in the same place over and over again with nowhere to stop it. It's likely this happens because the ladder that you've latched onto disappears and puts Sly into an odd limbo position since he's latching onto something that doesn't exist anymore. Hitting the void below causes the game to try and reposition him, but clearly it isn't able to do it. So instead of watching this all day, let's take a quick throwback to proxy jumps for another simple but very entertaining launch. If you did end up cannon skipping your way to the level a rocky start, but want to see most of it from above, then there's another really simple proxy you can trigger using the first bulldog that you come to, and it can launch you anywhere you want to be if you can get it to work properly. Yeah, it's another one of those tricky ones. To trigger the proxy in this level, make Cletus run towards you, and as the chain pulls him back, run into the corner behind him. When he repositions to attack again, Sly gets squished into the space behind the wall and Cletus causing him to fly off into the air. There are so many different ways that Sly can get launched depending on which direction you hold whilst he's getting squished. From sideways to a watery death, to halfway through the level, to all the way up and out of bounds where you can explore a huge area. This area is almost as big as the one we saw in Police Headquarters, and again there's no collision and a ton of invisible walls that stop you being able to get back onto the main part of the level, so if you do end up out here, there's unfortunately not much chance of escaping back to the regular path to finish the level normally. Depending on how good you get at controlling the launch though, you can land pretty much anywhere you like, and that even includes making it all the way to the end too. But if you want to get those kind of launches, then it means you need to do some very specific setups, which I never actually managed to get 100% right. I did almost get the whole distance a couple of times, but the furthest I ever got was as far as the roof of this building, which isn't quite the end, and there's an invisible wall stopping you from getting to the end, so that's helpful. Fortunately, of course, there's another glitch that'll help you get up and over this invisible wall, and it's called a boost jump. Boost jumping acts kind of like a triple jump. It's not really interesting, but it can help you reach areas that are a teeny little bit out of reach, like the top of the invisible wall here, which just so happens to help us escape back in bounds and finish the level. To boost jump, you need to be in any ledge grab situation, jump, and then press the square and pause buttons quickly before Sly touches down on the ground. Whilst he's in this position, tapping the jump button three times rapidly will cause him to jump again, and pressing X again at the top of this jump will give you the triple part of it. Sounds complicated, but honestly, with a little practice, it gets much easier. So if you end up using the proxy and getting trapped on the roof in a rocky start, just boost jump up onto the invisible wall, and you'll never need to do that amazing, way better version of the proxy that I can't do anyway. Ugh, I suck. And so does this glitch. So for the final glitch of today, let's fire Rally, the very first boss of the game, into an alternate universe, just to cheer ourselves up. Or just to cheer me up anyway. So far in this episode, we've seen Sly find a ton of ways to get out of bounds, but seeing a boss go out of bounds is something else completely. How can a scripted character get thrown out of bounds? Well, it's pretty simple, actually. 
Hit Rally four times so that he's only got one hit left before being defeated and then wait for him to finish his final tongue attack where he spins around a few times. After the attack he'll try to jump back to the centre platform but if you jump and attack him with the perfect timing he'll fly off behind it and through the wall in the background instead during the end of boss cutscene. The entire cutscene will carry out with Rally falling further and further down below the world until it finishes and other than facing away from the camera he really doesn't seem too interested in the fact that he's just left the world as he knows it. Pretty weird glitch and there's nothing else like it in the entire game so with that guys I'm sad to say that we've reached the end of today's glitch picnic. Thank you all so much for watching to the end as always and I'm sorry that this video took an entire year and a half to release. Life is a busy thing but my home studio is finished now so hopefully things will get released a lot more frequently than one video every year and a half. As always I want to thank the channel patrons for supporting the channel even after the massive hiatus and this time they are Max Wegner, Himdog and Talentless Hack. Again thank you all so much for watching and I will see you all in the next video. And remember, I love you all. Mwah!